come back to Bosnia Herzegovina. We last spoke, was it a year ago? Yeah. At the Hotel Bosnia, we did a podcast. Um, one thing I like about the cars in this country is you can always tell that in the countryside that they're they're like not perfect. Did you hear that? That was an absolute ace squeal of a fan belt that is most probably going to cause that engine so much work. But no, you came here a year ago. We talked, we sat in the center of Banja Luka, I remember, mm -hmm. and we were uh, talking Kelsey. about what brought somebody from California mm -hmm. to Bosnia. And if you want to find out about what Jose's answer was to that, I'll put a link to um, that podcast. But you're back. Yep. Yeah. The Balkans bit you seriously if you've come back again. It's been five years in a row now. My mom gets angry at me. Why are you going to the Balkans? You got your, you got your family back in Mexico. Um, so, yeah, I can't believe it. It's five years in a row. It's been consistent, and I don't, want it, I don't want to lose sight of that. I want to continue coming every summer. Funny that you were mentioning your mum because last night you had to get up from the table here. Yes. And uh, your mother was calling you. So family means a lot. In, Absolutely. In, for Mexican people. How do you sort of like equate the family, the, the way, the feeling of family in, in the Mexican culture to the very, very strong effects of family here in the Balkans? Family is, I think, my story of becoming, being an immigrant in America. And um, that is one of the values that has been instilled in me from the beginning always take care of your family, always be loyal, always support them. And coming to the Balkans, I, the people I've formed relationships with here that started off with friends um, are, fa are my family too. And it's like, mom, I have to go see my other family over there. I have my family of Serbians, I have my family of people in Bosnia, and now I want to expand that and have family all over uh, the Balkans. Uh, but that is uh, something that's very in instilled with me. How difficult has it been to accept Balkan culture? For me, coming from Northern Europe, from the United Kingdom, it, it was, I have to be honest with you, a, a huge shock to the way of life here, to the way of life that I had experienced before. And it's taken me somewhere in the region of 15 years mm -hmm. to get used to it. And I don't think I'm still there, if I can use that phrase. I mean, you're coming from even further afield mm -hmm. from me. Mm -hmm. Is it easy to accept? I'm very progressive with my views. So at times it does, uh, can be a bit frustrating of how some people aren't as accepting to new things, let's say being gay as one, one issue or being coexisting with different cultures and accepting everyone for the way they are and whatever. So that, but I see that as an opportunity to, let's talk about that. Let's be uncomfortable and hash out everything. But I think what I have been able to do is just un tell everyone that, you know, we're all the same. We're all going through some challenge, through, through, through some problems, and we just need to be kind to each other. And um, by doing that, I think in, 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 in these conversations, and they see that I'm trying to do that for them. I'm trying to show them, hey, you know, the whole world thinks, you know, Serbians are, are bad people, but I'm trying to show that that's not the case. That's that's your politics. Same with people in Bosnia. I'm trying to show you know people for who they are. So uh, it does get frustrating, but I do understand why people think the way that they do, and you know because they're brainwashed with media. Um, but it's uh, I always see that as an opportunity. Actually, let, let's let's have let's let's have a discussion about that. If people go to your YouTube channel, they see that you've taken time even in your own home country, to go down to the wall, mm -hmm. build the wall, um, and to talk to immigrants about the reality of, of the situation that they're in. And the reality is not the perception that most people get, like you said, um, in the media. When you talk about the Balkans to, to non-Balkan people, mm -hmm. there is equally a really twisted perception. How difficult is that when you get back to like California and you say you've been to the to the Balkans? Apart from people saying, "Is there still a war on?" Um, how how do you square it with them to try and tell them what the reality of it is? Yeah, yeah. and you know, every time I go on a trip, they're like, "Oh, where are you going next?" And they're like, "Bosnia." And they're like, "Oh, it's always oh or why or," and um, the good thing now is you know I've made several films about the Balkans, so I have been to so many incredible, beautiful places here. And uh, I just, you know, show them, I'm like, watch my videos and they watch it and they're like, wow, like this place is incredible. And, and 
and uh, I had no idea that this place was existed. Most of the time, most Americans are, are very um, aware of our geography. We know that there's Canada, Mexico, and then Europe, and then you know all these other countries, but they're not very aware of um, what's going on here. Um, but I, it's always like an, an opportunity to show them and teach them and, and say like, wow, th this place actually can teach us a lot um, for Americans. You know, I coming here to the Balkans, I've learned how to sit in silence, you know, be really engaged uh, in a conversation when you have um, coffee, learn how to live less. In, in a sense, you know, in America, everyone's trying to go after this minimalism kind of life, but here they're, they're, they're practicing that, you know, mm -hmm. they've been doing that for the last you know, 20, 30 years, or maybe even before that, but they do more with less. And I find it ironic. It's, it's, it's like the people here are trying to be more Western and then the people in Western countries are trying to go back. Um, so it's, it's, I think there's a balance there. And I, that's why I love being able to come here, spend my summers here, but also go back in America and um, be immersed in that culture. I love America for being super inspiring in the sense that you know if you have a dream you know go for it and um do whatever it takes and i love that about america and america's like let's let's fucking do this let's let's go out but at the same time there's that burnout that like that becomes part of your, that becomes really the only part of your identity that my role and whatever i do and when i come to the balkans it, it grounds me it's like no it's about um being present around you know family and friends and and having values and just enjoy having a dinner and be present. I'd like to pick up on you saying doing more with less. Before you came here to Bosnia this time, returning to Bosnia this time, you've just spent a number of weeks in Albania. Mm -hmm. And you said last night that one of the striking points was this difference between, I don't know what phrase you used, like, well, I'll, I'll say the super rich and normality. There's, there's yes. no, like, like no middle. And you said, it's amazing how they seem to do to survive with very, very little. That must be striking when you compare that to, to the United States. Absolutely. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen so many Range Rovers in a, in a neighborhood or BMWs or Mercedes, but then also see, you know, people on, on, on the street with like cars from the forties, fifties. So that was a super contrast. Um, I only spent a few weeks there because I had to come up here to pick up my drone because I want to get some amazing footage. We just footage. had a bit of a crash today, to yes. be honest, yes. Uh, and you know what? This is why I actually uh, left the drone because I crashed it last time. So me and drones are... <laughs> this is why Canada uh, outlawed, outlawed it. But um, I was only there for a few weeks, so I, I don't know the underlying problems, the roots of really what's going on in Albania. And I don't like to, you know, jump to assumptions. And just like in Serbia, it took me, you know, three, a couple of years to really understand the people, to really, to, to know what it is um, to live in, in, in Serbia and what a Serbian is like. So I think that's why my first video, like, it, it really resonated with a lot of Serbians. And I think with my Bosnian film, um, you know, I was here for three months and I don't think it was quite there as far as uh, really understanding the day of life of, of, um, of pe the people in Bosnia. But I think, you know, having three months did give me a good understanding. But Albania, I need to be there for a good few months to, to really understand, to meet people. I didn't really meet people. I just met my host. Um, but I do hope to go back. And, and my goal is each year to, to do one country um, in the Balkans. And I think the great opportunity I have is that when I, when someone watches a Serbian video, they'll go to see the Bosnian video and they'll, they'll see the Albania. And I think that's, that's, I'm understanding now that it, that it's powerful because they can see that all these perceptions or all these, uh, lies or rumors about, you know, our neighbors are, are, are not true. And they can see that, you know, they're the same. You're very focused on the story as Absolutely. a filmmaker and you said to me who cares about the tech in relative terms it's it's all about the story your storytelling technique is very raw it's very it you know with the greatest amount of respect it's, it's not Steven Spielberg but it has more impact because it's actually looking at the people 
I would say in, in, in an English phrase, warts and all. Mm -hmm. You know, you get the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. Whereas a lot of stuff that you see on YouTube and on the internet is super polished and, you know, color graded to perfection. And it, and it doesn't really tell um, the reality as it is. But to tell a, to tell a story and to tell <clears throat> a true story, sometimes you have to go outside your comfort zone with the possibility of maybe insulting people that you're filming. Do you find that at all? Yeah, in, in the beginning, especially just to, you know, pull out your phone and uh, it, it can be a bit intimidating. And for example, when I was in shooting Bittersweet Bosnia, um, I stayed at a local's house in Kravica in, in the Republic of Srpska. And I, the first time, it was really hard for me to, you know, put the camera out and uh, but when I finally did, people weren't comfortable with it. They're like, what are you doing? And, and people did not want to be around the camera. So I was there for a few days. I left and I came back and I, I was like, okay, I'm going to try this again. And I came back and by that time I, I formed relationships with people. And uh, it's the same ex exact thing as like people opening up to you. No one's going to do it on the first try. You know, like, who are you? You need to, let's have some dinners first. Let's get to know each other. Once people start to feel more comfortable with you and, and understanding why you're doing it, then it's easy um, to be able to have them tell, tell their stories. You're going to be leaving us in a few hours and then you're taking the train down to Sarajevo. Trains in Bosnia are very far and few between. Um, and you went to Doboy. Mm -hmm. What was it like going to Doboy by, by train? Honestly. I uh, got to the train station and I was like, okay, this is a, you know, run down and like no electricity. I was walking under the, the tunnel and I was like, whoa, this is, this is kind of, uh, kind of raw. But as soon as I got into, uh, you know, was greeted by the, the trainsman and he let me in and smiled. I went in and, you know, it did look like something probably from 50 years ago. But the people are just warm. That, that always keeps me going. And, and even in like sketchy situations throughout the Balkans, like there's always that warm smile or people always saying Dobrodan. Um, when the train started, it was like, <laughs> I was like, oh God, this is going to be a very long train ride. But after that, um, it was, the, the train ride was just going into the beautiful countryside. It was so green and you were able to see all the locals living with their houses, you can see kids playing, people getting off and, you know, hugging their, their, their mom and dads or getting off school. And it was so beautiful and I was just waving to people and they would wave back. And in that moment, I was just like, wow, this is my life. I'm, I'm very lucky. And as a kid, I, I, I dreamed of this. You know, I watched the Travel Channel and I watched, um, uh, what's his name, the Crocodile Hunter? Oh, um, oh yeah, the guy that, yeah, oh, God, I can't remember, Steve something. Yeah, Steve uh, or Samantha Brown on, yeah, yeah, on yeah, Travel yeah, yeah. Channel. And uh, but going to Doorboy was, was, was great. I uh, met a friend there who I actually uh, worked on Upwork, which is a freelancing mm -hmm. site. And he, was, he took me in to their house. He gave me that bottle. Of we'll, look, we'll, look at the, we'll look at the rack here in a moment. And uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was great. Would you say it's a must, a must do when you come to the country? Take a train ride. Absolutely. Hell yeah. And uh, the, the sketchier it is, the better it is. Like, if it doesn't, I think if you can capture uh, a vacation or, or experience or travel in your travels, if you can have a little bit of all those emotions, it kind of, you know, keeps you alive, you know? If everything's all scheduled and everything's AC'd, everything has Wi Fi and it's, you're super comfy, then you're not really um, feeling, you know, the whole. The, ex the, power the experience is not as powerful. Yeah, I always say do less, experience more. Yes. Um, talking about experiencing more, um, when you leave Bosnia-Herzegovina this time, where do you go next? I don't know. I, the plan was for me to stay in the Balkans for the whole summer and just kind of, you know, capture interesting stories, but I just had an interview um for a project back in the states for a show and um at this point i'm willing to work with other teams i want to learn as much as possible and if, if i can work with a well-established production team and just learn become a sponge that's going to help me 
um, just become a better filmmaker, better, better storyteller. So right now, I, I don't know what's going to happen, um, but I'm still going to continue making films wherever I go. Um, the Balkans is always going to be one of those topics that is always going to be of interest. Immigrant stories in America is one that you know is my is my story, so I'm definitely going to continue that and just laugh along the way. And uh, I want to uh, continue to just have that same theme of uncovering the truth you know we have there's a perception but let's find out the real truth whether it's at the border wall or you know person in albania or um you know something in, in russia that that's always going to be the core of my of my content and finally my dear chap when you're away from the balkans and you're meeting non-balkan persons what is the one thing that you include in in, in when you talk about the balkans to to non-Western Balkan people? What is the one thing that you always include in, in your descriptions or talks? This region has lost a lot. And because of that, people know how to appreciate every moment, appreciate every dinner, appreciate every you know, cheers you do. Um, and that's something that the whole world can learn from the Balkans, is just how to laugh, how to um, eat, how to drink coffee. You guys, they're experts at it here. We can learn from that. But it's always the, just the, the warmth in, in the heart of the people. I'll say thanks a lot. Thank you. And I'll see you on the next one. Yeah, for sure.